Welcome to Deep Matter. In this episode, Sean and I talk a bit about the past year and what we're each looking forward to in 2022, which I think for both of us is deeper meaning and connection in the work that we produce. For Sean, that means getting back to portraiture, both as a maker and as an educator. For me, it means recording more conversations and signal boosting interesting stories, regardless of whether or not those stories fall under the category of creativity. Here we go. This is 27. We've done 26 of these. I was thinking that the other day. Like We've basically done over half a year of these now. We started these when I first moved into this house in May, Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, because the first ones were on on my phone with awful audio in an echoey house with (laughs) furniture. So that was fun. (laughs) Sean, Sean, Sean. Yeah, 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 exactly. Hi, hi, hi. hi. (laughs) Ah, the good old days. (laughs) Coffee, 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 coffee. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I did have a kettle, yeah, so I could do coffee, yeah. Right. A lot has changed since then. I've been really blown away by the just the response to this show. Yeah. I, I don't think either one of us knew or expected or, or had any idea, really, you know, what was to come. But I think we're building this this great little community of, of really engaged listeners, and I, I couldn't be happier about that. I love it. I mean, I, I've, I've been asked to do something podcasty for ages, and I, you know, I'm, I, I can't do one myself. I don't really, I don't have the extra capacity and I don't really know what I'm doing. But the, the fact mm-hmm. that you wanted to have conversations is perfect for me because we talk all the time anyway. Being able to right. record them like this and put them out. And we initially started with Clubhouse, didn't we? So we sort of had audience interaction around that. And I think that built some nice community early on. Yeah. But then we realized like, ah, it's not really the right format. They, they did tend to go on quite long. Yes. Um, and to lose their way quite a lot. And I think people got um, a little frustrated sometimes that it was sort of pulled in so many different directions. But just sort of bringing it back in house between the two of us, having these conversations and now opening it back up so people can email us. And that's uh, deepnatter at gmail.com, by the way, where they can just send us like audio notes. It's kind of opening it back up to community, but sort of helping us still run a tight show is, is really going to work nicely, I reckon, in the new year. Yeah, I hope so. I th- I think it will. Yeah. Um can can we talk about this this Alexander thing that I sent oh, you yeah, just for yeah. a minute? Go for it. I mean, you you know I I love finding little things like this and when I saw this I was like, oh, "Why didn't I think of this?" <laughs> <laughs> about 10 of those a day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I I happened upon this app called Alexander and what it is is stories nonfiction stories. Uh, it's an app where you can you can listen to these, and they're read by, gosh, all, all kinds of people. Uh, John Malkovich reads one, and Helena Bonham Carter reads one, and mm. it's such a clean app. You can watch this little produced trailer that they do for each of the stories, and then you can listen to them. They're an hour long, or you can read them. So they they kind of meet you where you are, and I'm like, oh man, this is such a great idea. And not to say that there's room for only one of these types of things, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's so well done. I would encourage you to, if you do like listening to stories, uh, read by, you know, maybe people that you recognize, maybe people that you don't, but they're, they're really well done. They're, they're very well produced. Um, you know, and, and you and I have talked about me kind of stretching and getting more into production and, and Neil James has been an inspiration for that. And he's been a great resource for that as well. Yeah. And this kind of hits that, that mark for me of a little video trailer that's nicely produced and then uh, a a lovely audio story that's, that's equally nicely produced. I I just, I love it. So I would invite you to check it out. It's Alexander. It's a L X R.com. And the app is available for iOS and Android. So. Anyway, I know that sounded like an ad, but I just, I, yeah, yeah, I love just finding little things. <laughs> I know, you know, if, if you guys, Alexander, if you're listening and you do want to come on the show as a sponsor, we yeah. could talk about but that. First one's for know. free, but like. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting though. I mean, it's that love of long form audio, isn't it? And I, I, I mm-hmm. don't, uh, it is still a niche thing. I think people who, who listen to the long form uh, podcasts or listen to audiobooks when they drive, but like the people who love it, absolutely love it. 
and don't want anything else. Yeah. Like I'm one of those. I want to listen to somebody talk to me for hours and tell me things. I, I, I love getting lost in those worlds and something about it being audio only rather than a two hour long video, for example, is kind of better because I can do it while I'm going on a walk or taking Agreed. photos or other stuff, you know, yeah. so it only activates. I used to listen to a lot. Um, Audible was where, again, Audible, first ones for free. Like I used to listen, <laughs> I used to listen to Audible a lot, like uh, when I was editing photos back in product photography days, because I mean, for every day mm -hmm. of shooting, there were three or four days of Photoshop to process all those images. Oh, right. And so you've got hours and hours of, of hours. time in studio. Yeah, it'd be eight, nine hours a day just sitting at a computer doing cutouts and drop shadows. It was wow. like mind knowing wow. stuff. But I, I realized that like doing the repetitive sort of visual uh, Photoshop-y stuff um, is only one part of my brain. And it didn't inhibit me being able to take in a ton of information in, in that audio part of my brain. So I could... I would deliberately choose books from Audible, which were like long books that I really wanted to read, but just knew like I'm probably like the history of the world, you know, like I'm mm, not, I'm mm -hmm, not reading mm -hmm. 1500 pages on that probably, but I will absolutely smash 20 hours of, 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 of red audio on that. And, yeah. and because that's only a few days of Photoshop and I've, I've finished this like huge tome and I can take it in. So I, I used to do that as like a multitasking thing. I used to love kind of that long form audio stuff for those sort of long editing days. It was brilliant. Yeah. And, and you find like I, there, there are specific voices. Oh yeah. That I will listen to anything that they do, like Stephen Fry, oh, yeah. for example. I adore Stephen Fry, both as a human being, he seems lovely, mm. but I love his voice. And he he does these terrific audio books around the Greek myths called Mythos. Oh, yeah. He, he wrote the books, yeah. So they're his books as well. Yeah, he wrote the books and then he, he narrates the, the audio books and they are so, so good. Yeah. And uh, like I said, he's just got one of those great voices where it's comforting. It, it, it feels knowledgeable and, and authentic and honest. And, and it just, I can sink into that voice and, and listen to him all day long. And there are a couple people that I feel the same way about. I mean, he's the voice of like a generation because of the Harry Potter books. He, he, he narrated all the Harry Potter books. So he's been mm, in, like, mm -hmm. in the best possible way. He's been in millions of children's bedrooms around the world, like reading yeah. them to sleep, which I think is a beautiful thing. You know, I think so many people grow up with him and have like a massive soft spot for him. Yeah, he, he could read the phone book. I'm, I'm in. He's amazing. I'm in. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. How's your studio coming along? Good. Really good. Yeah. Carpeting has arrived. Walls are being reprepped because I, I used the wrong kind of paint right. on two of the walls. So we went and got new paint and uh, I've given them a good sanding to break the surface. Uh, so carpeting will go in. Uh, walls will go in ceiling is, uh, I've got to build the panels for the ceiling and then buying, you know, decor and, and gear. So I'm, I'm hoping that we are getting into the home stretch. This, this is the audio side of your studio. The audio side. Yeah. The, the paint side is pretty well done. I mean, if I wanted to be nitpicky, I suppose I could, you know, paint the floor if I wanted to, but I, I don't really see the need. Um, I've got some wooden molding to, to buy yet to go around the door. Nice. But other than that, it's completely functional and I don't really feel the need to, to put a ton into that. But the other side I've, I bought lights. I bought a couple of those little Amaran 60D yeah, you uh, me those. lights they at look, Aperture. They look so cool. They are terrific. I'm definitely going to They are a bright as hell. I, I couldn't believe how bright they were yeah. and almost dead silent. Very, very quiet fans. Yeah, I'm definitely going to pick up, especially for traveling. The fact that this got a Bowens mount that you can throw on modifiers in, but stick it in a tiny suitcase, like that's a game changer. It's really good. Yeah. And it comes with the little battery plate Perfect. for the Sony, you know, the Sony style batteries, which you probably have dozens yeah. of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I ordered a couple soft boxes, uh, a standing desk, you know, just trying to outfit it with what I think I'll need and, and really wanting to lean in to next year. You know, it's, it's weird on the back of 19, I've had some really deep natter 19. For those of you who haven't listened to that, go back and listen to 19. Uh, I've had so many people and you probably have too, kind of reach out around that episode. And I th thought I knew how I was going to feel going into 22 based on how I felt when we did that episode, but 
gosh, on the back of such terrific support and encouragement, enthusiasm, et cetera, from listeners, it's kind of changed how I feel going into the year and, and what I want to do going into the year, which I think is, it's been really unexpected. Tell me about that. Well, I mean, part of it is, is thinking about why, why do I want to do this? And, and, and when I, when I make some sort of declaration that says, you know, if I don't get movement, first of all, what does that movement mean? And a lot of people have written in and asked, well, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? What do you, what do you need to have happen? How can we help, you know, that mark get reached, whatever that mark is. Mm. And honestly, I hadn't really thought about what that means. And, and Adrian and I have had a couple of conversations about it. And, uh, you know, it, it really does come back to that, that Simon Sinek book of, of starting with why, yeah. why do you want to do these things? And then you can kind of extrapolate out of, out of that, the what, once you figure out the why. And, yeah. and she asked, is it monetary? I mean, do you want to hit X number of dollars? Is that it? Is it an audience? Is it a, is it just a feeling? And I don't think that it's, it's not monetary directly. It's monetary in that because we're giving away a portion, we're donating a portion of what I make in, in whatever creative endeavors I'm pursuing, we're donating a portion of that back into arts education and nonprofits mm. focusing on the arts. So I have, I have a number in my head that I would love to be able to hit uh, for 22. Uh, we're being able to donate, you know, a, a fraction of that this year. And, and it's great. I've only, I mean, what's it been two months or three months since I've been comfortable enough to, to say, Hey, I'm going to need help with some of this. And, and some of what you're giving to in terms of donations for me is going towards this stuff. So not only are you helping me, but you're helping other people explore their artistic side, their creative side. And I, and I can't thank you. Those people who have donated, I cannot thank you enough. And it's a very generous portion. It's important to say of, of what people are donating is going to charity. Oh, it's not a tiny uh, yeah, it's, skim off the top. No, it's, 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 it's yeah, a sizable yeah, no. chunk of what people donate goes straight out to charity on your end. Well, and, and that was, you know, that's something that I wrestled with because I didn't want people, I didn't want the thought to be, well, if you, if you can afford to give away so much, then why do I need to give you anything? And that's a very real objection. It's, it's absolutely valid. And the only, the only thing I can really say is because I will do this and this will benefit more than just me. In helping me, you are helping other people. And I think there's value in that. You know, if, if, if you have an objection to that, I completely understand it. I don't think but, people would. I mean, I, I, for, I mean to, to dangerously speak for you, I, I don't think you're asking for money because you want to make millions because it's not, you, no. you do something else. You're asking, you're asking for people to support the work you're doing and that just happens to be financial. And then, and then yeah. if I know you, you feel so guilty that people actually do it, that you start giving it away to everybody else. That's what actually happens. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> which is, I mean, which no, is kind of lovely. No lie. Because I, I think people should get into the habit of supporting artists who they get value from. And we should all do it. Like people, people support me. I should be turning around all the time and finding other people to, to support. We should be passing it on all over the place. And, and if you can't afford it, don't do it. But if you can afford it, find those people who you who who add value to your life and support them and then trust them that hopefully if these are good people and you've got a good read on them that they're not doing it to buy themselves a Porsche they're doing it to to support no. what they're doing to make more of the stuff that you love and if they have access to give it away to other artists and if we all have that mentality it's it's we're not we're not out to gosh I mean we wouldn't be artists if we were trying to do that we'd do something else it could be a banker right. or something like this is not what you do to make your millions. No, it's not. And, and look, I would love to, I would love this example to lead to brand deals with companies that, that see the value in this, that maybe want to put up gear or equipment or supplies to schools or education programs mm -hmm. to help offset where there's lack in those areas at the state or local levels. I would love that. I would love if, you know, if Windsor Newton or something wanted to donate a bunch of art supplies or if, or if Arteza wanted to donate, you know, a, a, a bunch of art supplies to, to schools um, or gosh, I, I mean, the list goes on. I could rattle off a bunch of things, but part of everything I do, I'm thinking about the importance of art, not the importance of 
the business side of art, but the importance of making art, mm. the importance of being able to express, Yeah, you know, what, what's, what's that, that old adage, you know, find, find the thing that, that time stopped when you were a kid and that's what you should try and do mm. at least as a hobby, Yeah, you know? And, and for me, it was always drawing. It was always sketching. It was always working with my hands. Mm. And if I can, if I can shine a light on somebody who does that in the form of podcasting and talking to more types of creative people, whether that's a musician or, or sculptor or painter or, or writer or whatever, getting away from only talking to or primarily talking to photographers, well, that grows my audience, right? Because now, now it's not just photographers who are listening. I also get to dip into other people's audiences while signal boosting some of their heroes. Yeah. And that's important to me. That's important in a very core sort of uh, uh, base level for me is to shine a light on the people that I think are doing great work. Mm. And if by doing that, the, you know, that sort of footprint of, of support or sponsorship or community, because that's really what it is, grows and we're able to help more people express themselves and, and pursue their own curiosities or passions, then everybody wins. Mm. That's, that's partially what I mean by, by movement and, and, uh, making some changes for 22 is I, I want to be able to reach more people both as listeners and by support and and by helping them to achieve what they want to achieve. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or am I just rambling again? No, absolutely. But, but I think something you said was really important because you, you said like, I think a lot of people feel a frustration that there's like a lack in their work or they don't really know what to do next and they, they're just stuck. But the, the problem is we can get stuck at that frustration and not move any further. Um, mm -hmm. And we just know that we're frustrated, but almost like coming up with a solution is is terrifying or having to even formulate what the problem is, is is a problem. You know, that's that's that feels like too much energy. So we just get I mean, in the, in the book, I talk about um, emotions are super helpful um, as long as we don't get stuck at the signposts because they're only signposts. So right. they're trying to tell you something and it's usually about yourself. But what what a lot of us do is if it, it, it's like getting stuck at a stop sign in a journey of a thousand miles, it's trying to get you to the end of the destination. But we park the car, sit on the side of the road and stare at the stop sign. We get stuck there. That emotion is right. trying to get you forward. It's not trying to get you stuck. So you when you when you felt frustrated, like what it sounds like you've been doing what that episode 19 especially helped clarify in the response was what's the, to formulate the question first, like what? not just get stuck at the emotion of feeling frustrated about your work or output or how it's received, but going, what is it? What's the problem? What's the actual problem? And then ask yourself the question, well, well, what would get me to a place where it didn't feel like a problem? What do I, right. what do I need in place? Which is where you start going. Is it financial? Is it, is it giving out to people feeling like I'm making a difference in other people's lives? Is it a mix of all these things together? And then you can start coming up with a solution, but you have to get beyond the feeling of frustration to actually formulate the question properly. And that takes sitting and facing yourself, I reckon, which it sounds like this year has been great for you for doing it. Yeah, it does. And it is. Um, there have been a lot of questions that I've been asking myself in, in recent months, especially about what it is that I'm trying to do and, and what it is that I'm getting stuck on. And a lot of it comes back to our good friend, Stephen Pressfield and that, yeah. that, that resistance, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, uh, I reread the, the war of art again and I found at the, at our little free library, uh, no, it wasn't the little free library. It was the library bookstore, uh, a hardcover limited edition. It's like a metallic reflective, like super cool. Sorry. Yeah. Super cool yeah. edition of the war of art that I'm going to give away after the new year. And I want to start giving away. That was, that was one of the other realizations. I have a lot of photo books and you and I were talking about this mm -hmm. over the weekend that, you know, I haven't opened in years. I haven't cracked them in years and it's not enough that I have them because there are other people out there who would have them and look through them and learn from them and study them and research them and, and pour over them and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I want to start giving away some of my photo books uh, to, to people who might find them useful instead of them just sitting on, you know, what I don't need is a YouTube backdrop. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs a YouTube backdrop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going to get, you're gonna, I mean, you're going to have to stick some gels on those Amran lights. That's what I'm saying. That's on right. Bookshelf. That's right. 
Yeah, bit and of, I, I've got some uh, some Funko little figures. I've got some of those maybe. from from Blade Runner. So that you know, I'm I'm kind of maybe some fairy lights. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 set that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but I mean, I've I've got some terrific books, and I if they're if they will be helpful to other people that can you know study them and learn from them, uh, rather than just sitting and gaining dust on my shelf. Let's do that. Let's let's pare down so I can I can refine. I can focus. That's part of that whole movement thing. That's part of what needs to change. And uh, God, I, I I feel really good about it. Actually, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I'll join you in that. I've definitely got too many books. And and before we move on from the War of Art, like I just recommend anyone who is any sort of creative to pick up the War of Art, Stephen Pressfield. It's it's one of the best books on a very specific problem that creatives face. Um, you know that feeling of resistance and why we don't make that. I, I certainly I've ever read. It's one. It's one of my top three books on creativity. So, the War yeah. of Art definitely grab it. It's a short read as well. It's not super long, so you'll crack through it. I would almost say resistance. No, in fact, I would say it. Resistance is not something that some creatives feel, that some oh, no. people who are trying to live, it's something that everyone feels. Absolutely. I would also recommend uh, a book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. Oh, yeah. Which is a terrific book. Do your morning pages, yeah. So what do you, what do you have for 22? What are you looking forward to? What are you afraid of? What are you, like, you going to sink your teeth into? I know you've got this long-term project, but that seems like there has to be something else in there because you're going to put years into, into that. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm frustrated at how slowly that's going. So I need to kind of, I need to kind of let it tick over and hope that it picks up some momentum, but I need other things to do. It was just like in the last week, actually, since we last spoke that I've, I really need to get back to portraiture more intentionally. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I've kind of, uh, I don't know. I think um, I think obviously the last two years have been very difficult to do that with the with the the pandemic and everything else. But the minute things start lifting in the spring, I, I have a feeling and have read some scientific stuff that fingers crossed that should by spring summer should be the worst of it, and that we will we will get little restrictions going forward next winter as well and little things. But but hopefully we can start to get back to life as normal a little bit more. Yeah, I need to. I need to get back in rooms with people and do portraits. I, I, I'm really frustrated at not having done it for so long. Yeah, and yeah, I mean that's everything. That's I need. I need to start getting back to just re, just opening the door and saying, "Who wants portraits?" I'm not doing it for money. I don't care. You don't have to pay me if if you've got something interesting about you that I can come and tell a, a story and take some portraits with you. I will happily do it for free if it if it's interesting enough and I think it'll add to my portfolio. Um, natural light strobe. I want to get back to doing portrait workshops, which I've, I haven't really sunk my teeth into properly yet, but I, I think I, I was even looking just before we, we were recording. Now I was looking up, um, creative spaces to rent in York where I can just, you know, hire a space for a day and bring my lighting through and have, you know, four to six people in for the day and get a few models in and actually teach people how to take portraits. I'm teaching portraiture and, Shooting portraits is is definitely a big big thing for for twenty two for me, um, because it is it's the strongest thing I do as a photographer, and it's the thing I haven't been able to do for two years as much, and um, that's been frustrating. And I was kind of yeah. hoping that this new project would would fill that void a little bit, but it's 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 either not going to or it's going to take a while to, and I don't want to wait around for that to happen. So I need to to branch out and. Uh, and get, just get intentional, make an effort with that. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll open doors to, to new things as well in general. It's a lovely way to meet people in an area and, uh, and all that kind of stuff too. So a lot of good things will hopefully come out of it. Um, I even thought about maybe not this year coming, but like if, if I I pick up that there is actually a demand for that sort of thing in 22, maybe look in 23 at actually permanently renting a space in York itself. Oh, wow. Set up as a, a permanent portrait studio that I might, um, you know, buy some decent gear and and uh, and fill that space and be able to shoot portraits ongoing there, but also be able to rent that space out for other photographers to use right. as well, because there isn't really a lot in York uh, for that sort of thing. I looked around for, for for photography studios that already had gear, and there just wasn't really anything. There was some guy in his lounge who'd set some stuff up, but I'm not I'm not coming to your lounge to shoot portraits. I'm, I right, need, uh, right. 
So it may, maybe something like that as well. And like that excites me because I, 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 I'm, I'm most passionate about portraits in photography. Everything else is fine and I enjoy it, but that's the, that's the thing that really gets me going is the people stuff. And I'm, I can't wait to get back to that. Where do you see um, the documentaries, either mini or long term, fitting into 22? Will will they make an appearance? Do you need to step back from that? Where do you see those fitting in? Oh, no, in terms of video, that's hopefully going to be um, a bit like a big feature. And it's going to, mm-hmm. I want to be doing one of those at least every second month. Uh, for sure. So I've I've got a list of people, and I'm I'm always looking for new people who've got interesting stories. And uh, yeah, that that'll definitely be a big part of the filmmaking stuff. Um, yeah, I've just you know, and I've I've got a list of ideas in terms of the channel. I'll keep it ticking over. It has slowed down its growth a lot, so I think I've found that audience, and now it's just a case of kind of consolidating and working out what I want to talk about going forwards. Um, so yeah, it's definitely lots of those documentaries. It'll still be the, you know, me sitting and talking crap on a couch for a bit, and those videos as well, <laughs> uh, the odd tutorial. But I think, yeah, more and more, I want to be a filmmaker. You know, I don't I don't want right. to, I'd, I'd love to get back to doing live talks. Um, and uh, I, I've, this is another idea I've had as well, is like, I, you know, around around the meaning and the making, I really want to write, you know, three kick-ass 45 to an hour long talks that I can go around and do live, but then Mm. film those as well um, at the end of a run and then be able to post those online as well for people to watch. Um, I'd I'd love that. I I love the art of public speaking. It's something I haven't been able to do for a while. And I'd, I'd really like to take on the challenge of turning that book into, into three killer talks. Um, would be would be quite cool i've already sort of sketched some ideas out around that so that's kind of another little goal as well um and i want to do more writing i i you know i i kind of in in my head i was like well i just finished this book and i'm not really a writer it's not my first thing but and maybe i'll give it another 10 years and we'll, we'll see what else i have to say but i've already started playing with some new ideas around writing as well um yeah which have nothing to do with but you do write you write i mean Every video you you write and research, and every every short film you write and re- so I mean I, I find it ironic that you that you don't call yourself a writer yet you've written two books, and you do write for nearly everything that you do. <laughs> I do. I, I, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's like a it's like a mental you realize thing. what that word means, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I, I mean, it's a call, it's like calling yourself something, labeling yourself something like, Oh, I know. Stephen Pressfield is an author. Like I'm technically right. an author, but that's his job. Yeah. That's where he puts all his eggs in that basket and says, this is what I do. I don't do that because it's not, if I tried to make a, make a living off my writing, I wouldn't manage. So it's, it's, I, I just, I'm cautious of that just because I don't want to pretend I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm I'm anything like these people who actually do this for a living. But the response to this book has been really good, and I think mm-hmm. it's been really encouraging to hear from people how. I mean, I, how do I do this without blowing smoke up my own ass? Like it's it's. <clears throat> which, I'll go on. Yeah, <laughs> put your back out. Here, te- um, text me what you're about to say. I'll do it for you. No, no, no. It's <laughs> it's it's reading like reviews on Amazon and stuff, and the amount of times people say this is well written took me by surprise. Really, I didn't expect that. I thought like, well, maybe I have some interesting things to say. Like otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered to write a book. And I and I think I communicate in a way that that hits people. But I I, I was underconfident about how that translates into writing and whether or not I pick up my book cold and think it was good writing myself. I can't have any objectivity about it, but right. reading these reviews and people who, who do read a lot by the looks of it and them saying it's good writing made me feel a little bit more confident about it and go, oh, actually, maybe I could try some other things with this. Maybe it is a valid skill set I have and not just a, a thing I tried once, you know? Right. Um, right. It's a, it's a confidence thing, I suppose. Do you have any indication, and I, I don't know how you would find this out other than maybe to ask, but do you have any indication whether or, or to what degree purchasers of the book have been people who already know you versus 
people who are new to what you do. Do you have any indication on how it's affected your audience in terms of demographics or growth or anything like that? No, I have yeah. no idea. I mean, I, I, I you know, we've we've spoken offline about this. I, I have no idea how this book sold, and I won't know until February. Um, it's mm. the, you just don't get metrics from publishers. They tell you twice a year. Um, they tell you in June and well, not June, July, and they tell you in February. And of course, my book came out in August, so it's been selling since August, and I have no idea how well it sold. I know the first print run sold out. Um, that's all I know. I don't know how many um, digital versions sold, how many physical versions have sold. I don't know who to or how. I have no, I have no handle on on where it is or how it's doing. I see people posting about it a lot and saying that they're reading it and. Sh- posting pictures of it, which is lovely. So I know people are reading it, but I have no clue at all. No. Does, does that part of it, the, the audience and the metrics and how it's being received and not, not knowing those things, does that have an effect on whether or not you would do another book or does it not even play into it? No, because the first book I wrote, I, I knew it would be for a small audience and I wrote it because I wanted to say some things. Um, I mm-hmm. think the reason to write a book is because you think you have something important to say, not yeah. not to yeah. to get a big audience or to make a bunch of money. Because trust me, going through a publisher, you don't make a lot of money. It's not it's not the way to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's that's I'd rather self publish it if you want to make money because you won't make money through a publisher. Um, yeah, uh, but I I feel like there are things that I want to say. And, and that's the reason to write a book. It's, it's like now I've, I'm kind of sketching out a book, which I've had in my mind for a while as well, that's got nothing to do with creativity or photography, anything. It's about relationships and people. And that's, I think, what I want to talk about next. Um, so again, like that would be potentially, if I tried to sell that to my audience, most of them would go, oh, that's not where we follow you. We're not interested. Um, and unless it's found yeah, its but way I'm out. I'm going to push back on you a little bit. Yeah. You said that about this book as well. Did I? When we were first, yeah, when we were first talking about this, you were, you were kind of apprehensive. Like, ah, I don't, I don't know if, if my audience is going to want to hear this. Mm. Well, I mean, you know? it, it, that was less of a departure because it's still broadly about creativity. This one's even more. Yeah. And I, and I wouldn't want to assume that people will be interested. Um, I'd rather just go, well, those who need to find it will find it. But I kind of, I think about books more now as like just something you leave behind that you thought as a legacy thing. Um, mm-hmm. Even if even if ten people more read so it, than your pictures, yeah, definitely, absolutely, really, hands down, yeah, yeah. more so than the videos. Um, really, absolutely, because because I I I can be so much more deliberate about word choice and presenting concepts in a book than I can in any other format. So yeah, I, I, and I like the fact that this book will exist after I die. It might not exist mm. in in incredible numbers, but somebody could walk into a bookshop somewhere in some weird corner of the world, pick it up after I'm gone, and it means something to them. is a is yeah. a beautiful idea to me, and I I love the idea of leaving leaving little things behind like that that I think will outlive the other stuff. I think that's my guess. Is is there a trajectory to your life in which that becomes your primary form of creative expression and you leave the other stuff to the side? I mean, never say never. It's 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 not my plan at the moment. But who knows? I mean, if I think you go in the direction where you can feel people are responding most. Yeah. Because I think the the thing that you do that's the most meaningful will always be the most fulfilling to you. So if for some reason people started reading my books more than they started watching the videos I make or what, looking at the photography I produce, yes, I'd be very tempted to just go, well, I'm going to back the other stuff off a bit and really focus on this because this seems to be helping more people for sure. Um, but again, that, that does come down to trying to read the room. Like where am I actually helping? Mm-hmm. What, 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 what's most meaningful to people? Because obviously that will also be most meaningful to me because – the whole point of this is, like I talk about in the book, it's my deep joy meeting the world's deep hunger. Right. It's it's where is the thing that I love doing making the world a slightly better place. Right. I will always gravitate towards that. So I'll just keep reading the room as I go and and move in those directions. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's why I asked about audience is if you had any idea of 
how many new people have come into the bubble on the back of the book mm. that you can speak to, engage with, and bring in as part of this growing community around the book. There, I mean, I've, I've had messages from a few people going, oh, you know, I didn't know who you were. So-and-so gifted me this book. And I just want to say it, it means the world. That kind of stuff happens fairly regularly, uh, which mm -hmm. is lovely to see. But again, it's not about the number of those people. It's about... It's about the quality of that community, whatever that looks like. You know, we've talked about this yeah. a lot. It's 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 um, Kevin Kelly's Thousand True Fans thing. It's how many people does this really mean something to? And is there enough of a community there or enough enough meaning being generated in that space that that's the most attractive thing in terms of what I do for me yeah. as, as someone who makes something because it's hitting people where it counts? Um, I don't know how you, how you define that, but yeah. Somebody gifted a copy to Lisa Pressman, the uh, the encaustic artist that I yes, follow. Yes, she posted that the other day, yeah. I thought that was terrific. I was like, wow, worlds collide. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, a lot, lots of those little things. I mean, just in the village, one over from me, um, someone picked, this, picked the book up and then she bought eight other copies to give to all her artist friends in the area. Like wow. lots of that kind of stuff is happening and I love it. And obviously this week, a lot of people getting it for Christmas and they don't know who I am, but like that... Yeah, I mean, if it, it, th that's all gratifying stuff. Like that's that's why you do something like this, right? Yeah. That's why you sit in front of a computer screen for eight months because you hope that it 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 hits people where they're at and they pass it around, going, "Oh, this helped me." Like that's that's the whole reason to do it. Um, it's the same reason I became a pastor. It all comes from the same place. I just want to help. Yeah. Um, I, I've learned some stuff. I think that makes my life a bit easier. I think if you know it, it will make your life a bit easier. So here it is, and I hope. You think so too, and that you'll think so enough that you give it to other people too. And that's, that's everything. That's why you do it. I think it's, it's also one of the reasons we put this show out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, we have these conversations, but, but one-on-one, -on -one, they're just for us, but one-on-many, -on -many, that potential effect, that potential help, that potential community grows exponentially. Yeah. And, and the feedback bears it out, doesn't it? You know, I mean, I've, I've, yeah. I've had lots Lots of feedback from this podcast, particularly with people saying the conversations you're having are really helping me think through my own journey or my own creative output or how I approach the things that I do. That's that. I mean, that's I know that's enough to make you happy. It's certainly enough to make me happy. That's that's everything. It absolutely is. I mean, and that's, you know, to to put a, a sort of a fine point on it. I just want to be of service. Mm -hmm. That's what I want, whether whether that's through this show or or through painting something that 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 you like to look at and pass by in in your space every day well, whatever it is it can't be about me well, it's not enough is it no i know so many people feel the same well, that's kind of why i wrote the book because that's where the book lands in that chapter on meaning is it has to be about whatever you make has to be about more than you getting rich or famous it has to be because you won't find meaning in that and if you need proof Go look at all the, the 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 super rich, successful people who took their own lives. It wasn't enough to give them hope or meaning. It wasn't. It's Kurt Cobain. It's Robin Williams. It's Kate Spade. Like these people, these people had that they reached those heights that I bet they were aiming for. It wasn't enough. It has to be about more than that. It has to be somehow pointed outwards. And I promise that's the key. I, like, I mean, the examples I use in the book are um, Martin Usborne taking portraits of the the galgos which are the spanish greyhounds because there's a big issue in spain with them being killed every year because the old ones are are thrown down wells or hung from trees in hideous fashion because they're, they're too old to hunt anymore and he couldn't stand seeing that so instead of taking photos for himself trying to get rich or famous he went over there and he took portraits of these galgos to raise awareness of what's happening to these dogs there is no way he goes to sleep at night feeling like, oh, I wish there was more meaning in my work. He, right. he, he's got a ton of meaning. That's not a problem for him. He might be frustrated that he's not making enough of a difference fast enough, but that's a different problem. He's not struggling mm -hmm. to work out what the meaning is. He knows exactly what he's doing and why. And if, if you can work out how to take whatever you do that you love and, and, like you say, use it in service for other people, I promise you you'll sleep well every night because – that's the missing piece. If it's only about you and your aggrandizement, you will never get enough of it. You're never going to get enough followers. You're never going to get enough money. You're always going to be frustrated forever. 
But if you find a way to turn it and make the world a better place in some small way, I, I guarantee you that'll be the piece that's missing. Let's take up a collection. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Sean may have been half kidding, but that's a great reminder for me to mention that there are real costs to producing these shows, and your financial support directly contributes to that. If you like what you hear and want them to continue, consider tapping the donate button at jeffreysadoris.com. That's J E F F E R Y S A D D O R I S dot com. And to those of you who have already contributed, thank you so much. It really does make a difference, not just in what I'm able to produce, but also in helping us to help and support others. You can subscribe to Jeffrey Sidoris Everything in your favorite podcast app to get Deep Natter along with Process Driven and everything else I release all in one feed. You can connect with Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Tuck. That's S-E-A-N-T-U-C-K. On his website at seantucker.photography or by searching for Sean Tucker on YouTube. And if you haven't picked up a copy yet, his book, The Meaning in the Making, is available through his website. Connect with me on Twitter and Instagram, at Jeffrey Sidoris. And if you'd like to ask a question, make a suggestion, or leave us a voice message, you can do that at deepnatter at gmail.com. As always, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you spending some time with us, and we hope you'll come back for the next one. <laughs>